Okay, let's go to the teleport room of Bob. And we can teleport to Bob. You know, Bob, Rao Baron, as he's known to most people. Bob drew his friends. Do, 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 do. Doesn't matter which way I go, it's the same way both ways. It, same way both ways? Same both way ways. Hey, Raban. I wish to greet our guests beforehand to offer my support for their cause. Don't men, I'll die, it matters not to me. Birthplace does not equate to birthright in my eyes. I take great pride in my establishments for this very reason. The Platinum Mirage in, in, particular, in particular serves as a showcase for the talents of countless men and women born beyond our borders. Good to hear. We must take pains to illustrate how accepting the Domans would... The Domans would... Wait, what? How, oh, how accepting the Domans would benefit the dark. Only then might the Syndicate be swayed. Bards sing of wars which decided the fates of nations, but a single word spoken within a council chambers is more likely to decide that of mine own. I have heard that the Sultana is a kind and generous ruler. Of the Syndicate I have heard less flattering things. Uh, yes, that's quite true. If we are all enemies of Galamald, is it not fitting that we should join forces? Yeah. But they're more interested in money than anything. Ah, pleasure. I'm tr pretty sure I'm an officer normally, but Corporal Ballius? The others are already inside. Let us not keep them waiting. I should really be more varied with voices, but I suck. Is this going to have voice acting? Oh, please let it have voice acting. There's a lot of different people. Please. I, Yugiri of Doma, am honored to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Yes! Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid, to request that you grant my people asylum. I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of Ul, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of imperial rule, and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived. How many do they number? More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of a number of ships which escaped the purge. It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. That is a lot of people. understand we do not beg a boon but propose instead an arrangement we would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid what are the syndicates opinions on this matter I for one think it's a marvelous idea lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored if they are willing to work I see no reason not to let them 
the head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? I guess no one else wants to talk. The law is the law. Lord Lolorito? Tell me, are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamegan refugees. God, his voice sounds so familiar. They live hand to mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the immortal flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. Where do I know it from? The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Okay, I'm gonna shut up about this. I just want to say, I don't remember who it is, but if you ever watch the original from the 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, that's what he's from. I don't know which character it is, but it's one of them. I just wanted to put that out there, I managed to remember. Continue. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamegan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes. The law is the law. And so our visitors remained in little Alamigo. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld. Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord, I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than guilt. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Uldar's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability since he began employing refugees. How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. Um, I know what I say doesn't make a difference, but can I just point out the fact that the Golden Saucer, yeah, that's making an absolute fortune and kind of has only hired people who were refugees. Everyone working there was a refugee and they're making a fortune. No, just, yeah. Not gonna listen to what I'm saying? Cool. You get on with your vote. 
to accept the Doman refugees or not. Those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. Wow, that's a surprise. And all of the silent people left. Within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of the man! If that Bastard had not forsaken the eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion. Yay! Hint. I have the money, thanks. Next. Promises to keep. Brow Barn would like to discuss how to handle the Dormen refugees. Oh, and you have food for this. As you observed, Nolorito is not afraid to speak his mind, nor is he like to change it. Oft have I wondered how a man so skilled at weighing the worth of things should be so incapable of seeing the value in people. Bah! I w waste no more words on him. Not when the Dormans are yet still in need of aid. Everyone, follow me to the Hall of Flames. Okay. Uh, I'm coming. Where is it the thing down here? Yep, it is. So I need to go to the etherite. Like the main one. The Steps of Nald. <laughs> so he seems like a lovely fellow. I always go this way, I never go the proper way, do I? The Syndicate has spoken, and I see no point in moving that the matter be reconsidered. The Monitorists have their position clear. Great. Well, da is not an option. Nor are our limbs are limbs are Gridania, I judge, given the state of their internal affairs. Which leaves our Dermot friends confined to the ship. Gods, the thought of them huddled in an airless hole with no hopes of better treatment. Would that I had more time to find an alternative, a place not bound by the concerns of our great nations. Minfilia? That is precisely what I wish to discuss. I understand the Syndicate's decision, I do. We all wish to preserve that which is ours, especially when we believe it to be under siege. But I cannot meekly accept this judgment, not while my people suffer. Would it be out of the question for us suddenly to accept us for a limited time, a week mayhaps? Or even just a few days. Excellent, excellent. I shall keep you informed. Lady Ugiri, I have a proposal if you would hear it. Out with it, Master Alfano. 
The headquarters of my order, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, stands in a place called Revenant's Toe, an outpost in Mordona. Like most outposts, outposts, it is frequented by merchants and other men of action, the, and lacks the comfort of more well-established settlements. However, the leaders of Revenant's Toe have been doing their utmost to change that. To that end, they have need of able-bodied individuals willing to work as frontier hands. Hard labor, lest you doubt, with no, not safe food and shelter by way of reward. Terms not unlike those which you yourself proposed, Lady Yugiri. Though I will not hear a word said against our beloved old Dark, Revenant's toll would afford certain advantages. The absence of unhelpful bureaucracy being the most obvious. If they can adopt, adopt, accommodate us, we shall gladly accept. Master Alphenor, once again I find myself in your debt. Pray do not thank me, my lady. The li life your people The life your people go to is one of hard labor and few comforts, as I told you. And before that, there remains the matter of how they may safely be borne to Reverend's Tower, which will be no small feat considering the distance and their present condition. Mayhap the old darn adventurers guild can be of assistance. Look for me there or on, Alex. Lady Ugiri, if you and your people would ac accompany me, we may discuss what aid the immortal flames can provide. Uh, I'll just hang out here then. Yeah, I've got to go to the adventurers guild, obviously. People really do that a lot to me. They just like, everyone walks off and just leaves me hanging out. Bum, ba, bum, ba, ba. Me, me, Modi. Yeah, right next to you. We are concerned with the Doman refugees that. We are concerned that, uh, that the Doman refugees may find the journey to Reverend's Toll too much to bear. Too long have they been sequestered aboard their ship with ins insufficient supplies and scarce room enough to breathe, let alone stretch their limbs. With that in mind, Mistress Ramodi has kindly offered to accommodate the Domans until such time as they are ready to set out for Mordona. You're going to accommodate several hundred. Those healthy enough to travel will embark as soon as transport has been secured, while those too weak to leave at once will be permitted to stay until they regain their strength. Thank you. What news? Transportation remains our great greatest obstacle, General. Is there aught the immortal flames can do? I fear that is exceeds our mandate. Were it a smaller number, perhaps it could go unnoticed. But the Syndicate will not bear the cost of escorting more than 200 domains to Mordona. What? Go when government fails to act, the responsibility falls to us private citizens. I will engage the services of 77 caravans on the domain's behalf. Very well. We shall begin contact negotiations at once. Contract. Your generosity is most welcome, my lord. After all that has befallen these good people is the least I can do. Come what may, you shall ever have, have a friend in Ulda, Lady Giri. And you in Revenant's Till, my lord. Well, it sounds like we have... We all have work to do. Lady Yagiri, let us put our heads together and settle the details of our arrangement, shall we? Mistress Mamodi is quite right. There is much to be done, Alex. I would like you to visit Gigion, the, se the 77 caravans representative in Scorpion Crossing, 
to ensure that everything goes according to plan. Yacht. I can do that. Well, I can try. Hop. Uh, you can't see my book. That's weird. It turned off for some reason. If I went the wrong way. Yeah, I have it's the other exit, isn't it? Uh Ah well, I'll just have to travel there. Yeah. See, this might be the long way of doing it, but we'll see. My right we have actually uh, do 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 bum 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 yeah. probably would have been quick had to go the other way but I'm on I'm halfway ish ish there I'll just go around plus Gray needs to stretch his legs bop what fate is this? Survivor acts. Do 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 So yeah, I suppose getting a few hundred people would really help Reverend Stoll with, like, being built up. And eventually it might become something more than just an outpost. Which is an interesting point. What if eventually, rather than an outpost, it becomes its own nation of sorts? Which then brings in a lot more complications, because then there's the whole point of... Then it would be a lot more political... And, I don't know, it's an interesting thought. <laughs>